She took him by the hair of his head and said, Strengthen me, O Lord God, at this hour. And she struck twice upon his neck and cut off his head and took off his canopy from the pillars and rolled away his headless body. Brethren in Christ, laude to Jesus Christus in secula. This is Timothy Flanders at the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. We continue our conversation about the various books of the Holy Bible in continuation of our Bible reading group, reading the entire Bible once a year, according to the liturgical Bible reading plan. This is a part of the Fellowship of St. Anthony, and which is a part of our guild community. You can get, join our guild community at meaningofcatholic.com slash register. You can also take a look at our online academy at meaningofcatholic.com slash academy. So let's have a few comments on Judith. This is uh, the text of the scripture that is, is coming up this, this coming week in the liturgical Bible reading plan. And I, I'm seeing a, a great deal of uh, a building and a revelation of the new covenant. As we started with Job, who is this Edomite, and he is proved by suffering, which is a revelation of the mystery of the cross. And then we have Tobit, who's from one of the lost tribes of Naphtali, who is also proved through suffering, but he has a uh, sort of a greater righteousness in, in his interpretation of the mystery of that cross. And then we have Judith, who appears as the first of two Marian types in these, these sort of short saga books of the scripture. Um, so we go with Judith, and then the next one is Esther. And they both have a very similar story arc. But what, another interesting thing is that Judith is also not from the tribe of Judah or Benjamin, but she's from the tribe of Simeon. And the this is describing the saga of a particular city of Simeon, Simeonites. And this city is not referenced in any other part of the Old Testament. And so it's a sort of a mysterious city, but it describes the, the basic story of the Assyrians come to destroy the city and they are in a great strait. They're they're losing. Uh, they're um, they're thirsty for water. They're, they're losing all their water because of the siege. And um, Judith, a a wealthy, beautiful, holy widow, enters into the enemy camp. And as I read in the opening few uh, seconds there, she cuts off the head of the general, um, Holofernes. And so she becomes this Marian type. And I think that it's, it's, it's a very powerful continuation of this sort of building to the revelation of the cross and, and the, 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 the mystery of suffering. And that now we have the glory of a woman who appears as a Marian type. And at the very end of Judith are uh, quoted some of the texts which are used in the Marian office. So it is, um, Blessed art thou, O daughter, by the Lord the Most High among above all women upon the earth. Chapter 13, 23. This is very similar, of course, to Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And so... Judith appears as this, uh, the woman who crushes the head, in this case, cuts off the head of the general, which of course is a type of the devil. So she becomes this Marian typology of the Old Testament. Uh, now I want to read, continuing on with the same, that same theme of the, the saga of these suffering servants. Um, Judith interprets that same mystery of suffering in her speech to the elders, uh, chapter eight, verse 21. She says this, comfort their hearts by your speech, that they may be mindful how our fathers were tempted, that they might be proved whether they worshiped their God truly. They must remember how our father Abraham was tempted and being proved by many tribulations was made the friend of God. 
So Isaac, so Jacob, so Moses, and all that have pleased God passed through many tribulations remaining faithful. This recalls what we mentioned from Tobit last week and how Raphael says, because you were acceptable to the Lord, for that reason, you had to be proved. Judith continues, but they that did not receive the trials with the fear of the Lord but uttered their impatience and the reproach of their murmuring against the Lord were destroyed by the destroyer and perished by serpents. As for us, therefore, let us not revenge ourselves for these things which we suffer, but esteeming these very punishments to be less than our sins deserve, let us believe that these scourges of the Lord with which, like servants, we are chastised have happened for our amendment and not for our destruction. End quote. This is very, very powerful wisdom from Judith, that we are to look upon our sufferings and our difficulties, our crosses, as really less than our sins deserve. Uh, this is a great piece of wisdom that we can take into our daily lives, our daily sufferings. And I think that this this is, uh, it really shows here, as she, as she tells us, it shows us that the mystery of the cross is contained in the Torah, in the wandering of the desert to the proving of, of the Israelites. Uh, there's a continuation of that same theme of against lust. This is something that shows up very powerfully in Tobit. And, uh, but in the person of Judith, there's very interesting remarks in the text where chapter 10, um, verse four, the Lord also gave her more beauty because all of this dressing up did not proceed from sensuality, but from virtue. And therefore the Lord increased this, her beauty, so that she appeared to all men's eyes incomparably lovely. And this is something that um, she later returns to when she is praising the Lord after the deliverance. And she says this, chapter 13, verse 20, the Lord hath not suffered me, his handmaid, to be defiled, but hath brought me back to you without pollution of sin, rejoicing for his victory, for my escape and for your deliverance. And so there's this continuation of, uh, as in as in Tobit, we learned that the dominion of the devil is upon those who have abandoned themselves to lust. And Holofernes appears as this, uh, he's the type of the devil, but he's also under the dominion of the devil because of his lusting. And, uh, one, and then what's, what's very interesting is that in Tobit, we have that prophecy that the Gentiles would forsake their idols. And in Judith, we actually do have a Gentile forsaking his idols, uh, and which is also prophesied by Judith, chapter 9, verse 19. And all nations may acknowledge that thou art God. There is no other besides thee. So then we have um, this character of Achior, and he was the one who warned Holofernes, but then Holofernes um, tied him up and left him for the for the Hebrews to take. And in chapter 14, verse 6, it says, Then Achior, seeing the power that God of Israel had wrought, leaving the religion of the Gentiles, he believed God and circumcised the flesh of his foreskin and was joined to the people of Israel and all the succession of his kindred until the present day, end quote. So this is this is a remarkable revelation. First of all, he sees the miracle. The, the miracle itself is that Judith is the deliverer. And this, so this is the manifestation of the mystery of Christ who comes in the flesh through the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Theotokos. And seeing this miracle wrought converts him a Gentile so that he is joined to the people of Israel. And what again, what's, what's interesting is that it's not the Jews, it's Israel, because we're talking about the tribe of Simeon. So it's it's the one of the lost tribes here, um, but this is a fascinating uh, look, I think, at this revelation of the cross. Is that there's this once again this same theme of suffering and salvific suffering, redemptive suffering, and then we have the fruit of the Gentiles. So we have all these different books in the Old Testament are all they're all meditating on the same mystery of Christ and His Church. And that's what's so fascinating and wonderful and beautiful about the Old Testament is that, as St. Augustine says, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So with all that, let's offer up an Ave 
to Our Lady, who is the destroyer of all heresies, and that she may also crush the head of the new Holferenes, the devil, especially in all of our own lives, to overcome the sin in our own lives and make us worthy to offer unto him a true sacrifice of praise. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mutiarbus, et benedictus fructus ventris tua, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen.